Nearly 20 years after scoring the winner for Manchester United in the Champions League final against Bayern Munich in 1999, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has been appointed as Man United's caretaker manager after Jose Mourinho was sacked. It's been a bit of a whirlwind few days for Manchester United fans and some really can't, can't believe what's happened at the club. But Solskjaer has obviously been gone for a while. He spent quite a few years back in Norway at Molde, won the title there and obviously had time at Cardiff that we've seen. But what should United fans expect from him? You know, what happened with Solskjaer at Molde that we can expect to see? At Manchester United. Now to speak about this, I'm joined today by Oivin Brenner, who is the sports editor at VG, which is a Norwegian newspaper. So thank you very much for your time today, Oivin. Thank you for joining. Well, let's get I mean let's get straight into it. You know, what what's the feeling in Norway among Norwegians about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer being appointed manager of Manchester United, one of the biggest clubs in the world? Oh, everyone here is ecstatic because it's very big. Uh, no one actually believed it could happen uh, when we heard the rumors um, in uh, uh, in our newspaper. No one actually believed it, so we were a little late uh, on t taking into us that it really could happen. Uh, but uh, now uh, everyone is talking about it. It's the most read story every day, um, and everyone is uh, hoping for Solskjaer to do good because he is very popular in Norway, and we concern him as the most uh, famous Norwegian person alive. Really? Wow, that's, yeah. that's, high, that's high praise for Solskjaer. Obviously, United fans love him from his time at the club, and he's given his first interview and his first press conference now as Manchester United manager, and in, in that, United fans got excited straight away. He was talking about how he wants players to express themselves, how he's got an attacking style and philosophy. Is is that something that he achieved at Mulder? When when he came to Mulder, is that type of football what he tried to implement at Mulder? Yeah, I, I think you can say that he is the quite opposite of uh, Mourinho, uh, and that's why they've chosen him because Mourinho is defensive. And he is uh, not a very nice person, um, I can say. But uh, Solskjaer, he is um, he's well liked, and his football philosophy is uh, quite like uh, Ferguson's. He like pass and move, and like to play offensive football. Uh, if you talk about his Molde career, he was uh, very successful in his first spell. Uh, won the title two years, won the cup, and then he uh, got the big chance uh, uh, at Cardiff. Afterwards, it's not been that good. Uh, he has not won, won the league, uh, and he has not been very close either. So um, he, he was better uh, as a manager in, in terms of results uh, in 2013, 2012, and then he has been in the last years. And actually, uh, this season, uh, the first half, he was not very, doing very good. People were uh, discussing, should he get a new contract or not? Uh, but the the last bit of the season, um, they did a lot better and they claimed the second spot uh, in the end. Uh, but it's been like uh, ups and downs and he, hadn't, he hasn't uh, managed to create the same success uh, as he had uh, the first time. And obviously, you're talking about the first time there. He won back-to-back -back titles in Molde and it was the first in, in their history in terms of Norwegian titles. How much, was an, how much of an achievement was that for Solskjaer to achieve that with Molde? Uh, they were 11th the, the year before he came, uh, so that was a big achievement. Uh, that being said, uh, Molde is a big club in Norway. Uh, it's uh, not a big city, but they have uh, always been there uh, in the top league. Uh, and uh, the owner of Molde is one of the richest guys in Norway. His name is uh, Kjell Inge Røkke, and he um, picked Solskjaer to the job, gave him a lot of money and gave him good players, good young Norwegian players. So when he came in, he had uh, good opportunities to, to do well. Uh, but of course, uh, he was the main factor that they did it. Yeah, well, something that United fans are really hopeful of seeing, because as you say, Mourinho and Solskjaer are sort of complete opposite types of managers. And United fans are desperate to see a return of exciting football after we've had David Moyes and Louis van Gaal and Jose Mourinho. You know, was, was Solskjaer's Molde side... Were they an exciting team to watch or did they end up grinding out results more often than not? No, I think they were an exciting team to watch. So um, he, he is uh, offensive when he's uh, thinking about football. Um, the first game he had uh, when he came back, he lost 3-0 to zero against a uh, newly promoted side, Sarsborg. Uh, but he stayed calm. He, he is quite sure about his ideas and he is uh, a, lit a little bit like Ferguson, playing uh, possession, changing a lot of players and could change systems from game to game. Uh, and um, the problem with the Molde has been uh, 
they've been not being stable enough now in the second period he's, he's been there but the top point has been much higher than any other team's top point in the league in Norway Rosenborg is the best team for like this last 20 years and they won this year and the last year uh, but they even they are not as good as Molde when Molde is really um, playing the best football they can I really so what when Molde and Solskjaer in their prime is is the best that best football that yeah. has been in Norway yeah that's true and 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 he is also uh, quite good to to use young players uh, young local players um, or even uh, Norwegian young players so that's uh, I think something that Mourinho was not so uh, good at uh, and that will he bring in of course he's just going to be there for six months it's not not maybe that's um, so important but uh, for for Solskjaer, it's important with the the, the culture uh, of the club, and I think that uh, he, um, when I when I thought about it first time, I thought it was crazy to get uh, a manager who has number two spot in Norway for the biggest club in the world. But when you think more about it, he is kind of the perfect guy just now uh, after uh, Mourinho, who is he's not a positive person. Solskjaer is a positive person, uh, and he has the. the support of the supporters and he will go to the dressing room uh, and uh, see the people the, the uh, former players of Molde they say he's very good to see one another see the the other uh, staff members in a positive way when Mourinho is sitting there I think that he has a just um, much more um, depressing view of the world and he sees people uh, from upside down but Solskjaer he is trying to build them up that's a, I, I like that I like I really like the sound of that. I mean, something that United fans are really focusing on as well as this exciting football, you mentioned it there, but United do have a massive history of promoting the youth and Solskjaer was our reserve team manager for a couple of years. What can you tell us about Solskjaer's youth, use of the youth players at Mulder? How important were they to him? And are there any examples of players who have come through under Solskjaer that have gone on to do really good things at Mulder and maybe gone on elsewhere? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, if you remember uh, Alf Inge Holland, uh, do you remember him? The victim of Roy Keane's attack? Yeah, he, uh, he has a son, and uh, his son is the biggest talent in Norway, uh, Erling Braut Holland. Uh, he was uh, one of the best players in the Norwegian league this year. He was only 17, and they sold him to Red Bull Salzburg for um, 10 million euros. Uh, and uh, Solskjaer um, made him work very good uh, on top. He's uh, very big and very strong, uh, despite his, his age. So he, he is the last example. Uh, so he has attracted those young players to come to Molde. If you, I guess the, the, the people watching here don't know Norway very well, but uh, Molde is a small city uh, far uh, away from uh, Oslo. Uh, and it's not, not a very popular place to live um, uh, despite the football team. But Solskjaer made people go there anyway, uh, young players. And uh, Mats Daddy, who was in uh, the United Academy, uh, for example, uh, and he, as he also brought to Cardiff, he, um, he did very well in his first period, uh, minus Eikrem. He has always bought Eikrem everywhere he's been. In Molde, that, uh, that was a good thing. In Cardiff, he wasn't good enough. Um, so, uh, so he was very clear on picking the young Norwegian players um, for his team. That, that's one of his philosophies uh, back here. I mean, United have got players. We've got a, a guy called Mason Greenwood who scored a hat-trick in, in a game against Chelsea in the FA Youth Cup that Solskjaer actually watched last week. So that Obviously, we've seen the impact of Marcus Rashford coming through. So, you know, bringing through the youth has always been something that United fans have loved to see. And I think we're all excited to see that. And obviously, Solskjaer spent 12 years under Fergie and he considers him one of his biggest influences in terms of his management style. Is that something that you saw... In Molde, you know, what can you tell us about his style of management that you've seen with your own eyes? And have you seen those sort of Fergie attributes coming through? Uh, Ferguson is more of a character that you will fear as a person. So Solskjaer doesn't have that dimension. Uh, he is the most, uh, as I said, famous person in Norway. So he is a big, big celebrity. So he has a kind of... Um, atmosphere around him because of that but when he's uh, at the bench you don't have that uh, Fergie, Fergie um, fear but, uh, but uh, he is um, I think he's very good at the uh, tactics he knows football quite good uh, and Kjetil Rektal um, a Norwegian soccer legend uh, who was sharing the room with Solskjaer at the World Cup 1998 in France 
he is he is known as uh, a bad guy in Norway, and Solskjaer is known as the nice guy. Uh, but uh, Rektal said in an interview the, the other day that uh, everyone sees me as bad and Ole Gunnar as um, the good guy, but uh, he is tough. He can be tough. So when it's about selecting team and picking out players and uh, putting people that don't uh, achieve what he wants them to do on the bench and stuff, that's no problem. Yeah, I mean, that, that was what I was going to ask you there, because Solskjaer has been talking about how he wants to re-establish this family club feeling at Manchester United, the sort that he had under Fergie. And obviously family, families have disagreements. You know, he, he's known to United fans as the babyface assassin because he does have such a positive warming persona but you know are there any examples you can remember of him showing you know Fergie had the hairdryer treatment when things weren't going his way he knew how to get his own way does Solskjaer have that characteristic as well I, I think uh, uh, in the media perspective when he's doing interviews he very seldom slams his own people uh, persons but what uh, happens behind closed doors can be different um, uh, it's not very much of uh, episodes that I can remember that he has been very hard uh, but the it's, it's, it's um, Molde has been a club that uh, has been not uh, having a lot of rumors out of the clubs. I think that he has managed to do uh, to keep it there. I think that's important to him because they've gone to school in England. In Norway, the journalists can go to every training, interview players everywhere. So uh, in Molde, it's been more locked down than the usual Norwegian clubs. So we as Norwegian journalists are not so fond of that, but. Uh, I guess uh, Solskjaer will be happy that he has established that in, in his club. So he, everyone knows that he is the boss so, and he can do consequences on the people who break his rules. And I think he has managed to do that quite good in, in his perspective. Uh, but, you know, for, for all the positive feelings that Solskjaer is coming with, he isn't the greatest manager in the world and he does have some weaknesses. If, if you were to say anything that you feel United fans should be wary of about Solskjaer as a manager, what would you say that is? In, in England, I think he's very inexperienced with the transfer market. Uh, he was in Cardiff and he didn't buy any good players. Uh, he, I think he bought like uh, 15 or something and no one really was good. And he bought three Norwegians, uh, which one of them, Mats Dari, was a good talent. The two other one, Jo Ingeberg and Eikerem, was not good enough. So that was very strange. And he missed on that thing. So if he should be the permanent manager of Manchester United, I think that's a big weakness. Uh, regarding experience, as I heard him today said that he has been the manager now for 400 games. So that, that's not bad. So, so the experience uh, problem is that he has only experienced uh, a lot of games in Norway, uh, which is, uh, yeah, in the biggest stadium, you have 25,000 spectators. You have four and three thousand on someone uh, now we're going to Manchester City and places uh, he has never been in that position for a long time with a good squad so he um, we don't know where he stands uh, regarding to that and of course Guardiola and the other guys they have much more uh, experience and also knowledge about training teams in uh, in this um, level so I think that's the two things that I, I will point out yeah, I mean, that's fair enough. Transfers as well is something that United have been very poor at, but we're looking at the moment of trying to bring in a maybe a technical director or a director of football to help that. And so maybe that will help Solskjaer as well. Yeah, because, of course, he has been there for uh, for 24 hours. And last week he was thinking about, OK, should I buy uh, Erik Ulland Andersen from Strömskotse, Norwegian club? Uh, he is a player that, of course, not is on uh, United's radar, but he has n not uh, been thinking anything o about that. But, uh, but that being said, I think his uh, aim now is to get the best out of the players who are there. And especially the defenders, uh, they are frightened. They have been that. So I think they're good players. Uh, I, th I think that they can achieve very well. If you put the, all of the players in the United back uh, four in uh, to, for example, Southampton, Everyone would say that that's a star player. But in United, everyone like uh, Bailly, he's so bad. Uh, Smalling, he, is, uh, he cannot communicate. Uh, Phil Jones is a joke. But these players in other good teams, not top teams, would be like the best players in their teams. Uh, so my, uh, my meaning is that if he can uh, get them to have uh, faith and get them up 10 to 20%, suddenly United don't need new players. I mean, yeah, certainly if he can get more out of you saying no, the likes of Bay and Lindelof, I think they can both be fantastic centre-backs, but they do need the confidence of a manager. But, you know, as a, as a final question, a final thought, what do you think 
Solskjaer will achieve this season? How do you think it's going to go for him at Manchester United? I think that uh, you and me could go into the dressing room and uh, have a better chance of getting good results against Cardiff than Mourinho would have because I think they were uh, they were finished with him. So he has a very good start. Uh, he has easy fixtures. So um, it's probably he will do good from start. So his season will be, um, uh, I think that we, the important thing, will he make top four or will he go to the Champions League minimum semifinals? Without those achievements, I think that he won't uh, could, uh, will be in discussion for the permanent job, uh, and, I, and I don't think he will make that because the PSG is so good and it's so far up to the top four. And you know that Liverpool and Manchester City they are unbeatable this season. Tottenham, I don't think they play very well, but they take a lot of points. And then it's one spot left, and Chelsea is also very good, and Arsenal. So uh, he will do good. Uh, but I don't think it's possible to to cut that uh, necessary gap. And in Champions League, you, you, you need a little miracle. Avi, we'd certainly need a miracle there, but I suppose Solskjaer provided the miracle when he came off the bench <laughs> against Bayern Munich, so that's what United fans will turn towards. But, you know, for, for United fans with Solskjaer, he doesn't need to finish in the top four. He doesn't need to win the Champions League. It's just, if he can help re-establish the values of the club, you know, bringing through the youth, bringing that family feeling back, then that will be a good thing because the club would then be set up from the summer onwards to bring in a manager into the right situation. But of course, for for he, for he for he, that would be good for he and his legacy. But for of course, he dreams of that that job. No, he has the job. He has he is closer to the job that he is ever gonna be. So for him, uh, the the main goal will be to get it uh, permanently. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, thank you very much for your time today, Irvin. Uh, hopefully, this video has helped you. Um, understand Solskjaer's time at Molde, exactly what we've got in Solskjaer as a manager. We know him as a player, but we don't know him as a manager. So thank you very much for your time today. Hopefully it did offer you that little bit of insight. If you're new to United People's TV, uh, make sure you subscribe and like the video. And hopefully we might talk in the future after Solskjaer's won the Champions League. Eh? That would be nice. <laughs> so we wish you luck. Okay, Thank bye. you.